bacterial flora, get rid of uh, infectious agents like candida. Um, there is some, again, I, I, another, I don't want to be necessarily be the guy that promotes apple cider vinegar, which is an, um, a natural substance that's available on the market, but apple cider vinegar with a little bit, uh, teaspoon, I think two tablespoons apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon baking soda, glass of water, and if you apply that topically, that's been shown to help uh, rosacea. So that might be a little short-term way to manage the problem, but in the long term, you need to recreate the balance in the body. Um, <clears throat> for people who haven't done the plan, or people who have done the plan, you want to do the plan again. So do I combine the apple uh, vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and the baking soda? Yeah, you combine those together, and that's just to treat it topically. You still need to treat it systemically through the McCombs plan. Um, when you do the McCombs plan, you can't take apple cider vinegar internally until week nine, but um, sometimes even doing that internally creates another beneficial effect for rosacea. Um, you know, for people who are interested in doing the plan, redoing the plan, we're offering 10% offering off if you call us today or Monday. Um, again, 888-236-7780. But you can, you know, I would start addressing the body and start, start making your body healthier, otherwise <coughs> you're, you're um, it's, it's yeah, I wanna very difficult. I want to do the plan and follow it after I... Hello? I do the plan, uh, then i supposed to get the same diet that you recommend on... Uh, I, I do the same uh, diet, I mean I continue the diet or I can have uh, all the daily, daily products? Um, well, that's a good question. I, I, we always encourage people to, to eat the foods that work for them. So if you find that eating foods uh, really promotes more symptoms of any problem you're experiencing, obviously those foods don't work for you. And I would really use that as the basis, not really so much allergy testing. I'm not a big, big component of allergy testing. I don't believe it's that accurate. But just, you know, and, and that usually means whole foods. So eating whole foods works best for the body. Eat the foods that work uh, best for you. Um, uh, also, with women with vaginal infections, we also uh, sometimes recommend, um, we've, many of my patients have found that if they take a couple of the probiotic capsules and insert those twice a day, that helps um, establish the bacterial flora or, the, or what's really the right pH of the tissue. Um, so only the proper bacteria grow there. Um, that, that can help. So those, I mean, we... we there are other things to do in conjunction with doing the plan that may help bring faster symptomatic release, relief while, in, while at the same time you're addressing the, the systematic problem. Any other questions? Uh, no, I think I'm going to try the, your plan, and then if I have any more questions, then I call you. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in. <clears throat> so it's it's again you know it's it's many sometimes in rebuilding the body it's a process it's a process towards health so we have to do the things that are necessary to create that and um, it's better that we don't look at you know, even the McCombs plan is well I did this and now I should be healthy it depends on what your body requires what the process that your body is is involved in uh, to create greater health uh, our next question um, here we go. Hello, I have vaginal candida. I've tried everything, nothing helping. Could you help me? What should I do? I think we cover that in uh, the phone call. Um, so pretty much all the, what we mentioned there. Uh, the next question is, I'm on the maintenance plan and still following the McCombs eating plan with the exception of adding back some stevia. I'm wondering if that alone can promote fungal growth. Um, no, but uh, that alone doesn't usually promote fungal growth. Um, we don't recommend artificial sweeteners on the plan. There's some research now that's showing that the artificial sweetener itself can suppress the immune system um, by, again, affecting these uh, receptor sites that we show through the picture um, that we put up and how that uh, suppresses the immune system cell function. Um, and also, some stevias include inulin. What is inulin? Inulin is what, uh, it's a prebiotic. It's basically a, a type of complex sugar that the bacteria feeds on, and in the process of feeding on it, you get the production of butyric acid, other fatty acids that the body requires. 
So in our pro probiotic flora prime, we use inulin. Uh, inulin is a very long chain sugar, so it's very difficult for a lot of bacteria to feed on it. And we've, what's been shown is usually the bacteria that has more of a beneficial effect in the body um, <clears throat> tends to do well with that. So it's usually the probiotics that we're giving to people does very well with inulin. Uh, another common one is fructooligosaccharides, FOS, FOS. FOS is actually a short, shorter chain sugar, and it, it is a type of inulin. And uh, what, but what has been demonstrated is sometimes uh, bacteria that may create more of a harmful effect can feed on that also. So we, we use inulin. It's, it's more preferential to creating more balance in the, the proper bacterial growth and reestablishment of, of the, the normal ecosystem of the digestive tract. Uh, let's see. Next, can candida become resistant to natural antifungals? There is uh, a lot of research on that. Um, and that will be in our drug section of the library. Um, here's, a, here's a research uh, report. The capacity of candida albicans to rapidly acquire resistance to antifungal drugs such as amphotericin B, um, uh, flucytosine, uh, and a series of azoles. So your azoles are going to be like your diflucan, uh, fluocosinol, um, these, these drugs. And there's some, I was just reading research on another new azole drug coming out. So the capacity of candida albicans to rapidly acquire resistance to antifungal drugs such as these drugs means that continued development of new antifungals remains an important focus for clinicians and pharmaceutical companies. Okay, so candida has an amazing ability to adapt to the ways that these drugs try to destroy it. And there's a problem with killing fungus in the body too. Just as we mentioned, um, when you kill bacteria, you get a hemorrhaging of all these intracellular components that create a very strong inflammatory reaction. This happens with fungus too. So if you destroy these cells and they release all the internal components, you create this strong inflammatory reaction and there's a possibility that that can lead to autoimmune disease. But uh, you know what, the, what you'll see this over and over, because of candida albicans' amazing ability to adapt to antifungal drugs, that they have to continually develop new drugs. And what I think what that information tells us is it's the wrong approach. Because they're not having success, they haven't had success, and the success they've had is limited, but what they're doing is also creating antifungal resistant strains. So now we're empowering this microorganism to become stronger. One of the early main uh, criticisms of antibiotics is that they cause antibiotic resistant strains. This goes all the way back to the um, 1920s to the development of antibiotics, I think 1926. Um, you know, what, what comes out of candida? Uh, one study shows 85 immunoreactive protein species, immunoreactive meaning our body system reacts to these substances. Um, and that's just the protein, so it doesn't mean the sugar. Um, so the sugars, the proteins, these substances inside, uh, our bodies are highly reactive to, and this can create a lot of inflammation, um, as well as um, lead to depletion of the immune system, um, uh, immuno manipulation of the immune system, creating shifts in the immune system, which favor spread of microorganisms. This is what happens when we, we use drugs, and this is why they, they need to keep researching. This is why we get the resistance. So yes, we do develop resistance to antifungal drugs, but the, the question was natural antifungals. I haven't really seen that. Natural antifungals tend to inhibit more than they destroy cells. Uh, I think I went off on the antifungals because that's what grabbed my mind. But natural antifungals um, tend to inhibit. So what we use in candida force is a fatty acid which, and as I mentioned, uh, candida requires fatty acids uh, to function to develop its cell wall membrane to um, convert from the yeast to fungal form. Um, so while things like garlic, uh, potiarco, um, olive leaf extract, oregano, um, lavender oil, a lot of different essential oils, and again, as, as I mentioned earlier, every plant, every plant on the planet makes an antifungal substance. So these are designed to inhibit the fungus, but you see it's not wiping out the fungus in, in these jungle environments. It's just keeping the plant safe. And that's really what antifungals do. They inhibit uh, this, the growth, but they don't get rid of it. So when you have a systemic problem, what you're going to see is usually you don't see antifungals creating that effect. It doesn't affect it systemically. It can have a benefit in the intestinal tract, and that can help reduce a lot of uh, problems. But it won't get rid of the systemic problem. 
um, 